Hey guys, so this lesson is going to be pretty much like a show and tell sort of thing, just lots of pictures. So hey, easy for you guys, all right. So this one's titled, Give Me the Data. In other words, how do we collect data? What sort of devices do we use to collect different types of data? And we're going to just have a look and see what we can find out. So we have data that is all around us, all kinds of data just sitting there waiting to be collected. So we need to capture that data. That is the input that we provide into a device, which then needs to store that device, no, sorry, that store the data somewhere, okay? So it stores all the data somewhere. We then have to having to process the data, and then we have some sort of output which then allows us to make sense of the data that we've collected. So let's see what that actually means. So we have our data, data that's anywhere. We have to then capture that data or input data into some sort of a device. The device could be something that is based on sensors, all right, so it could be automated and automatically getting information, or it could be manual, where we manually type in and provide information or data to the device, okay. Then we have to store that somehow. Now, storing of data is actually pretty easy. It could either be on a local, in other words, what I mean is the device that you're using, okay, or it could be put onto an external device, perhaps. It could be linked to another device somehow, or it could even be online. It could be uploading it into the cloud. Then we have to process that data so that it becomes something meaningful for us to understand. And again, the device could be used, it could have processing uh, software on the actual device that you're using that's capturing data, or it could be that you download the data onto a, another device of some kind or a computer, and you use software then to process that. That software then allows you to create the output. And the output could be in the form of printouts, sheets, graphs, tables, images, you know, whatever is, is, is necessary in the context. So if you have a look, we've got, let's think of a, a, a warehouse, all right? So a warehouse has got lots of stuff. It really does, okay? We use a handheld scanning device with barcodes to capture the data of all of the stuff that's in the warehouse. That information that gets gathered and inputted into your device then gets put and stored on a server or an external device somewhere, external computers like servers, for example, okay? Then we process all of the data that has been collected with software, and then we're able to produce output, graphs and tables and information that we can see and make sense of all the stuff that is in the warehouse. All right, does that make sense? Okay, man, I hope it does. All right, so here's a quick example of data capture. Have a look here. So we have the application. Remember I said that we need software to capture and process. So there you can see there's a, a handheld tablet device with a stylus. We have mobile computers like PDAs, all right, personal digital assistants. That's what PDA stands for. PDA, interesting though, uh, PDA used to stand for personal digital assistant in the context of a, uh, what do I call that? Uh, a little device that would be your calendar and your diary and appointments and stuff like that. And we don't really get those anymore because our smartphones have taken over that. So anyway, but this PDA, Personal Digital Assistant, is specifically for data capturing. And then of course, there's another one there. There you can see we have two handheld devices. One is the uh, barcode scanner. Another one is also an RFID reader. It reads RFID tags and then takes that information and puts it somewhere. So let's go and have a look at the various devices that we use for capturing data. Okay, here we have a very common one. Okay, it doesn't look like that these days. I think I found a pretty old photo. Sorry about that. That is a magnetic strip reader. Now, the magnetic strip reader is for a card, so like a credit card or a debit card, or a plastic card with a magnetic strip on it, and the magnetic strip actually contains data and information. And this card reader, when you swipe down, it actually then reads that information. Here we have a tablet, a tablet with the software. So a tablet with software can be used for capturing data. Here you can see there is a questionnaire, and people can then go and tap on things and enter in their information. The device here is the tablet using the software to capture the data. 
these are pretty cool. These are PDA scanners, all right? And they will scan things, either barcodes, if they've got infrared scanning abilities, or RFID tags. And so they can scan and get information from an RFID tag and display that information on the screen. Again, that's a hardware and a software solution for inputs. Here's another simple one, a smoke sensor device. A lot of uh, devices that capture data are based on sensors. They are built to make sense, to make sense of things. <laughs> That's not what I meant to say. They are built to detect things, to sense things, okay? For example, movement or smoke or gas or various dangerous chemicals, for example, okay? so. That's a smoke sensor device. Here's another sensor device, a seismograph. A seismograph detects earthquakes, earthquake activity. And, and most of the time you'll find that they put this device, that's an open seismograph, okay? You can see it looks like it belongs in a case, like the top part's missing. That's because the top part is missing. It normally gets put into a special case or a cylinder or some sort of protective casing that gets put in the ground and it's able <coughs> <laughs> cough, cough. In the ground, and then it's able to detect movement, uh, you know, of tectonic plates and stuff. I mean, I'm not a geography teacher, so just saying tectonic was pretty cool. All right, but there's another input device or data capturing device. Another one here, we have a PDA data scanner or processor. Probably should have put this with the other PDA scanner, but there you can see we've also got various input. We have a touch screen there. We've got a keyboard at the bottom there or keys at the bottom over there. This one, I took this one because you can see it's got an operating system built into it. It's a scanner, okay, like with uh, infrared. It's got RFID ability. It can read radio frequency identification tags. It's got Wi-Fi, so it can connect online and upload and download data. It's got a GPRS, so it can actually use a satellite to detect a location, Bluetooth for short range data transmission, and GPS as well, which also works with, with your GPRS. Actually, GPRS is Global Packet Radio Services, and that's for uh, radio frequency communication. GPS, Global Positioning Satellite, Global Positioning Services. All right, here's another one. I thought I'd show you this one. Same sort of thing, but it's got a little printer built inside of it. How cool is that? It like prints stuff, <laughs> that's so nice. And in fact, you've seen that when you go and pay for something like a point of sale system and they, you, you like do stuff and then it prints out the receipt. It's the same thing, it's pretty cool. And yet another picture of a data process. I, I think you're getting the picture now, okay. So another one there, okay. That one, yeah, okay. That looks like it's actually built uh, into a phone, but I think that's a special device, that one. Okay, moving on. Here's another example of different types of sensors for a weather station. We have wind speed, I think. We have something else, something else, something else, something else, something else, and wind direction. I don't know what the something else's are, I'm sorry. But all of those have different types of sensors to detect different things. So I would think one of them is like, wind or pressure in the air or moisture in the air, temperature, you know, that sort of stuff. I think, I'm not a weatherman. Ah, the good old POS. You've heard me say this POS a lot lately, okay? Point of sale system. That's a nice example of a couple of different devices that all work together as a point of sale system. So the big one at the back there, I mean, there we have a touch screen. We have another screen behind it. We have a little printer built in that prints out receipts and things. Down to the bottom right, you can see we've got the uh, point of sale system that's a handheld device. Okay, that's pretty cool. To the left of that, we have phones, which can also have point of sale software on. And that's what a lot of guys are doing these days. They actually have a device that connects to their phone via Bluetooth, and it actually allows you to process sales via a, an online system. The ATM, typical input device, captures all information that you type into it. You tell it what you want, it gives you the money. Although not always, you have to have money. Touchscreen device, another form of input capture. There it is, input capture, data capture. There it is, you just touch stuff and it works. See, I told you this was a quick and easy visual lesson. Ooh, this is cool, guys. A virtual keyboard virtual keyboard that means it's not real it's virtual and you can see there it's got a little device that projects by laser beams these um 
keys onto the table. And as you then go ahead and tap something on the table, you're breaking the link there of the laser, and it then detects that, and it knows what key you're going for. So that's another form of a wireless input device and also a virtual input device. This is pretty cool. Which brings me on to our last one, which I kind of like, and that is the optical keyboard. Now, at first, I'll be honest with you guys, okay, I didn't know what an optical keyboard was, so I had to do a little bit of research, and then I found out what it was, and I'm like, whoa, this is cool. Let me tell you what an optical keyboard does. An optical keyboard is a mechanical keyboard, like the ones you'll find on your, your laptops and your desktop PCs and that. Great, but it doesn't use a spring system uh, and connection points, okay, like your typical mechanical keyboard does. In fact, this uses a light or laser beam uh, or some sort of light emitting thing. And what happens is that when you touch the key, it registers that touch as you typing on that key. Now, the difference here is it is a lot faster than a typical spring-loaded mechanical keyboard. Way faster because the signal is faster. The tr it's the speed of light. I mean, come on. Can the flash run faster than the speed of light? I don't think he can. Prove me wrong. However, back to the optical keyboard. The optical keyboard uses light underneath the key to detect when the key has been pressed. And so you get much faster response times. Great for gamers who really want to be on top of the game in terms of response times with the keyboard. Optical keyboard is the way to go. In terms of other input devices that are wireless, here's just an example. I mean, we've got remote controls, the mouse that you know about, wireless cameras, IPTV or IP cameras, wireless cameras. They're all using technologies such as Bluetooth or infrared. These are all wireless input devices. So make sure you familiarize yourself with a couple of different devices, even just around your home or as you're walking in a shop somewhere, have a look and see what devices are they using to capture data. Are they wired or are they wireless? And if they're wireless, what are they using to capture the data? Like, is it Bluetooth? Is it the Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, is it infrared? Okay, cool. So. Basically, guys, it's all about the data and how we collect it using different devices. And that's what this lesson was about, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.